Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna review your swimming. <laughs> That's right, I'm gonna put you guys on the spot now and see how well you guys can handle the criticism, huh? <laughs> but in all fairness, uh, we have a lot of videos in our private swimming Facebook group. And if you're not a member, by the way, click the link down below and join. It's the best swimming group out there because you get free feedback from people like me <laughs> if you want if you have the guts to upload your video and ask for feedback which is what you should be doing if you really want to improve your swimming because uh words and talky talk doesn't really add up to much compared to video all right the video never lies okay so i'm just gonna give you my non-biased uh, assessment of uh videos that i see in the group that have been posted lately, and this will probably help you in your swimming journey. So let's get started. Let's get to the first video. Okay, so... First of all, you notice that this guy is not wearing goggles, okay? Now, this is not a fair assessment because it would be like me being a driving instructor and you being the driving student, and you showing up with a car that does not have a windshield, okay? In all fairness, we can't really do a, a road test without a windshield or a proper car involved. And this is what I'm talking about. This is why I tell all my students, you need the proper gear first before you start swimming, okay? Before you even step into the water, you need a good swim cap, a good pair of goggles, and a good swim suit to start with. Okay, without these three components, you're shooting yourself in the foot before you even end up in the water. So make sure you get these three items and whatever additional items that you need. And if you want to know what gear I recommend, click the link down below. What he's doing is pretty smooth, actually. Pretty good. But he's having a hard time and say he's squinting his eyes because, you know, the water's getting in his eyes and... This is not a good long-term plan because when you expose your eyeballs to chlorinated water for such long periods of time, it's going to get to your eyesight, okay? So protect your eyes, okay, from those chemicals. Those are dangerous chemicals. They will irritate your eyes and make your eyesight go bad real fast if you keep this up. So get a good pair of goggles. I mean, you don't need the most expensive pair out there. I mean, decent pair will run you about 20 bucks. So, get started on getting good gear first. Next clip, let's take a look. <laughs> first of all, good dive. I mean, great dive. This is what I can't stand. See all these kids in the other lane that are just goofing off? This is what I hate, hate the most about pools, okay? The problem with pools, most pools like this, is that you got too many people that you can't stand in one area, okay? The pool is like a shopping mall, I always say. It's, there's, you have to niche down, you know? See, that's the great thing about CrossFit, is that it's niched down, right? CrossFit people love hanging out with other CrossFit people, right? There's There are no other niches in a CrossFit gym. You don't see CrossFitting people hanging out with powerlifting or bodybuilders or MMA, right? No, CrossFit gyms are just for CrossFit people. Competitive swimmers should have a competitive swimming pool only to themselves. I mean, they shouldn't have to deal with this bullshit like that you see with this other... <laughs> So these kids might be in competitive swimming classes, most likely, but you can tell that their level is so low compared to her swimming skill. So, so do you see what I mean? I mean, even in martial arts classes, you know, classes are segregate, segregated into levels, like for example, beginner level class and advanced level class, and then maybe a mixed class at the end, maybe. But usually they separate the levels for a reason, like this. This is what I can't stand. But Overall, her breaststroke is, yeah, very typical competitive swimming style breaststroke. It's very aggressive. The dive, the start is very clean. And then, 
yeah, all, there's not much you can say about this video except, yeah, this is like textbook maneuvering here. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. What can I say? She's got a very good front crawl. <laughs> and for such a young age, you know, you know, most kids can't do something like what she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> what can I say? I mean, yeah, some people were complaining about her splashing. But, you know, when you get aggressive, you know, when you, when you slip into the water with your arm again, I mean, th there's... You gotta let some shit slide, okay? The water's gonna splash a little bit. <laughs> Here's my honest take on this. I mean, these people, they are in their right minds. I mean, they're rooting for their kid in this competition kids are trying their hardest which is fine but they've really lost the essence of swimming in my opinion the essence of swimming is not to compete with one another to become the fastest this is what i this is what i can't stand about competitive swimming because the competitive aspect brings out the worst in people especially when it comes to swimming i mean swimming was never supposed to be competitive like this you were never supposed to race against each other like this this is like race horsing you know like when you go to the racing tracks and you bet money this is what it looks like but you're using humans instead of horses you're using your own child and there's no betting involved in this <laughs> so it sucks even more yeah, this is one useless spectacle in my opinion and uh if you are a parent if you're teaching your child how to swim you're supposed to teach your child how to swim in order to survive the waters that's more important than competing against Brian or John in the other lanes in the long run. It's just you and the water. That's it. That's the only relationship you should be focusing on. Not other peers, but the water and you. That's it. Imagine you're in the ocean. Imagine you're in a lake. Imagine you're in an emergency situation. A typhoon hits. A tsunami hits. How are you going to handle yourself when you're in that situation and there's water involved. That's what it boils down to, in my opinion. So this is just bullshit. Competing with each other. I mean, yeah. I've seen a lot of competitive swimmers become jaded with the sport because they've been down this path for so long. They've been misled. So that's my honest take. Okay, so, very good first attempt. It looks like a first attempt at front crawl, which she's doing. But you notice that her shoulders are stationary. So she's moving her arms like this, as you can see, right? When you move with your arms in front crawl, you turn with the whole body, okay? You lead with the shoulder, okay? So when you turn your body, you gain like this much more distance, with each pull, with each reach, okay? Versus this, this is me reaching, this is me reaching now, see? I can extend even further, okay? So, yeah, just get your shoulders involved and you'll be fine. And uh, yeah, she looks really comfortable. As you can see, <laughs> she has no fear, which is good because a lot of adults, they have a lot of fear, they have a lot of shame when they're starting out because, you know, compare themselves to others, which you shouldn't. You, know, you don't need to compare yourself to anybody, okay? Just be humble, accept that you suck in the beginning, and just do your best. That's all I have to say. Die! Fool! So her, her dolphin kick is great for her age. Uh, you can see that she's not really pulling the water with her arms effectively compare in comparison. which is normal because she's just a kid i mean you know doing butterfly requires a certain amount of upper body strength 
okay? You got to pull as hard as you can. And she doesn't have that muscle yet. She hasn't developed it yet. So you can only expect so much from, from little kids to do a difficult move like butterfly. But she's doing fine. Like, she's, she's got the mechanics down, so. She'll be fine. Just give her a few more years. And yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Okay, so well done. He's very comfortable. He's like he's playing in the water. He wasn't taught how to do side breathing though, so which is why he's coming up for air up front and doing the doggy pedal to hold himself up, so like that, right? So he's wearing goggles, so that's a plus because usually people who don't have goggles they look forwards, right? Because they don't have goggles on. They can't see where they're going. So for his case, he shouldn't be looking forwards. And he should be looking to the sides when he comes up for air. And don't stop. That's the beauty of side breathing. Okay, It doesn't uh, disrupt our flow. Whereas coming up for air looking forward does. So pretty good. This kid will do fine. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, flexing, yeah? Spin, spinny, spin a rooney, spin, 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 spin a rooney. Okay, so I've done this move. You've probably seen my videos before. It's fun to pull off. All you have to do is just turn one shoulder and keep turning it. That's how you spin in the water like that. Okay? Just turn and keep turning. And the water will just help you spin. It's a lot easier than doing it in the air, actually. So that's a fun, fun trick to do if you are playing in the water. Kind of like this, uh, the first video, uh, the guy didn't have uh, goggles on, and she doesn't have a goggle on. And, uh, her flutter kick looks great. Uh, her pull is pretty good. Uh, I would recommend that, yeah, she's tried to practice bilateral breathing, breathing on both sides. Because uh, in the long run, you're going to start developing bad habits, right? If you turn to only one side, if you breathe to only one side, your neck is going to crank more towards this side. So you're going to be lopsided. You want to develop both sides of the neck muscle, right? Just get familiar with both sides, okay? Because a lot of people, when they first start off with swimming, they have one side that's a lot stronger, more dominant than the other. And it's usually like, like for example, people who are right-handed, their right hand pull is much stronger than their left hand and vice versa. So this is why I always teach students to practice breathing on both sides. And the best way to do that is to practice one, two, three, breathe. All right, so one, two, three, breathe. One, two, three, breathe. And that's more balanced. And uh, the way she's practicing is fine, except uh, these kids are such a deterrent. I can't stand practicing you know, adults practicing when there's so many brats around playing around. And this is what I'm referring back to. Like, pools are not really niched down. It's just too general, right? You're just full of people that you can't stand. Like, these people here are all lounging around doing nothing. These people here are all goofing off and playing around. And this woman here is trying her hardest to learn how to swim. So do you see what I mean? Like these three components don't, they collide. And this is what every swimmer has to deal with it at every community pool. So I think the pool of the future for me would be like a CrossFit gym kind of pool 
where there's only people who are adults who are dedicated to swimming and just learning the craft and getting better. No horse playing, no lounging around. These people will be kicked out. They wouldn't be allowed in the pool environment. That's my pool of the future. Good. Hey, <laughs> finally, I see a kickboard drill. A lot of people just, they forget to do their kickboard drills. It's the most basic drill out there. If you're starting off, I mean, it, it improves your flutter kick. It improves your arms. Get a practice with a, fl practice with a kickboard, guys. I always forget this. It's like those people who train at the gym and they forget leg day. So here's my only beef, okay? So the kickboard is to help assist you. But uh, a lot of people, when they come up for air, they really rely on the kickboard to hold them up. And they take a little bit too long at that breath. So the only suggestion I would have for this kid is to take a quick breath, quicker breath, and go back in. Okay? We, it's more like a stealth breath. Okay? So I, I can see it's already too long right here. See, that's way too long. That's too long. I know it looks short to you, but to me, that's way too long. Okay? Any body part that's sticking out of the water for a long period of time, like even this long, I know you think it's short, but it's long. It's going to sink the entire body, the rest of the body. Okay, so you don't want to dis disrupt that flow. You just want to be hydrodynamic constantly. Okay, when you stick that head out, uh-oh, you ruin that flow. You disrupt it. So boom, boom, quick breath. Okay, that your body has no time to adjust. Boom, boom, boom. Sneaky breath. We call it alligator breath, we call it sometimes. Good work, kid. Got good flutter kick. Good teacher. Good job. <laughs> and that's where we're going to end this video, okay? So I uh, hope this gives you some insight on how to improve your swimming. And if you haven't, uh, join our Facebook group. It's private, but it's totally free. You get feedback like this for free. Ask questions. You just get better, okay? You interact with the community with over 7,000, more than 7,000 of us online from around the world. And you got nothing to lose, okay? So join a Facebook group. And if you really want to learn how to swim, take some swimming lessons, okay? Sign up for 7dayswim.co, okay? It's my online swimming course. Thousands of people have learned how to swim from that course, okay? It teaches you the basics from A to Z, okay? So you have no excuses. This kid can do it. You can do it, all right? So get started and... Uh, if you haven't, subscribe to this YouTube channel, like this video, hit the bell. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!